Wow. That's a nice introduction. Oh, this is nice. So it's raining. There goes my tan. I'll get it back on Saturday. A lot of smiling faces out there. That's nice. So far I'm nailing it. Um, a lot of visitors too, which is great. It's nice to see a lot of visitors out here. Um, for all you visitors, I'd like to draw your attention to um, the lighting. <laughs> Take a small moment. Oh, yeah, I know the rock is nice, and, and the cross is, and, and the paint, and the carpeting, uh, but the lights. The plumbing was nice too, but the lights. Maybe you guys will have your opportunity. Uh, you know, I, I I appreciate the introduction, but um, I guess I should go back just a little further. I just so you know, you know, um, a little bit of history, real quick. Uh, for most of my life, I have been um, I've known God. I've been a Christian. Uh, between the ages of two and four, I uh, was in a season of selfishness. <laughs> but other than that, I'm, I've been pretty good. Um, but. Uh, Thank you for listening again, or for the first time, or for the last time. Uh, we get to share this moment together. It's really nice. Today is a special day. Did you guys know that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's Administrative Professionals Day. <laughs> and it's almost over. I have some material here, but it's uh, so rich. So, um, you know what I should do, though, if you haven't figured it out already, I should throw out a real quick disclaimer. Um, some people have told me that I have a dry sense of humor with a dash of sarcasm, if that helps you. Um, and, uh, you know, my. Uh, Delivery or a presentation may be a little bit um, different than maybe what you're used to, and that's good, I think. Um, but I, I don't. I'll get serious for just a second, and I'll say. Hopefully, I say this once, but I don't want you thinking that I think this is a joke. Um, I take this in, in the place where I'm standing right now very seriously, and. Um, you know, so I, I just want you to know that I think it's an honor any time to be able to talk about God, who He is, and what He's done. So, with that, I'm sorry for being so serious for a second. So let's blast through these next two hours together and uh, just pound this thing out, okay? All right, get comfortable. Everybody's familiar with the scripture, I, I, I think. There's a lot of scholars here. And Jesus came to give us life, and life more what? More life stressful and difficult and minimal. Right? What's the word? Abundantly. He gave us life more ample, more plentiful, more comfortable and easygoing. I don't know about you guys, but in my little world, um, I stroll along sun-kissed beaches <laughs> in indisclosed locations in the South Pacific. And I have an unusual adaptation that God gave me to run for hours on end. I never tire. The weather's always perfect. So if I did feel warm, I'd take a little dip in the ocean. Swim with the turtles. <laughs> so if your life every day is not like that, I am sorry. But maybe I can help you. Is it possible? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it possible 
to live a victorious life? Yes. Is it possible to share it with others? Yes. yes to both. How do you know, Matt? Well, I just know that this is true. So, right away, if you know the Word of God is true, then you're going to believe what it says. In John, uh, 1 John 5, I want to read that real quick. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That's pretty simple. There's, there's the whole, you know, the Bible's full of them. Um, another one is 1 Corinthians 15. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8. All, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. I can go all night with these until I run out on this, this page I wrote. So, if you're going to believe the Word of God, then you're halfway there. I want you to know that we are God's idea. He created us. And He's not going to create poo. Can we say poo? <laughs> Can't say poo? It's too late. It's too late for poo. Okay. But He's not. We are His. We are Him. We are His fruit and His light and His life. And I got into this message of living victoriously, and I, uh, I figured it was going to be um, pretty easy. But apparently there's a lot involved of what it takes. And there's many ingredients to it all. And so um, I'm just going to focus on one that I thought was important, but um, faith. And I'll sprinkle and pepper in some other ones, and you guys can pick through them and point them out yourselves. But... I want you to know something about the mystery of faith. It's not mysterious at all. There's nothing mysterious about faith. Simply, all faith is, is believing. That's what it is. And faith does not depend on signs and wonders. It waits for an end result. It doesn't. The state of our heart is dependent on what we see and hear. That's faith. And faith will never be outdated, never done away with, and it's never going to be replaced by anything better. Page two. Then, <laughs> like we read in, in 1 John, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And it's available to good-looking people. I'm out. No. It's available to everybody. Everybody. Everybody here. So, faith, we can, we can teach it. We can preach it. We can sing it. Read it. Pray it. Prophesy it. We can music it. But do we believe it? Do we believe it? So, do you believe what God has done for you? Or do you hope that God will do stuff for you? And there's a big difference between the two, and I want to point that out. Um, we deal... If you're sitting in this room and you're breathing, we deal with so much in our lives. So I made a little list, it's, it's a happy list, I called it, of, of things that are not, not happy at all. So let me read them out here. Trials, doubt, fear, sickness and disease, stress, poverty, loss, tragedy, Conflict between people and ideas? I don't even know what that means. Those don't, they all sound so nice. But none of us can escape any of those things. 
So do you hope to get through these things? Do you hope that you won't have to deal with doubt? Or stress? Or do you hope that you're not going to see that person at work? Well, there's a difference between having hope and having faith. Because hope is always in the future. Hope is looking towards maybe someday, someplace, sometime. And faith says that I have it now. That I receive it now. Um, one of those things on the list, the happy list there, um, was uh, sickness. Need some water. And right now, um, a lot of people know that my mom's going through um, and has cancer. And so, um, I want to honor the main bills tonight. But I feel good about this because I got to tell you that my mom is a person of faith. And with everything inside of me, I'm confident. I know, without a shadow of a doubt, that she knows that she's healed. She's still a person. And she, like anybody else, doesn't want to hear information like that coming out of you. And so she deals with things emotionally, just like you and I would. But she knows right now where she is. If she could be here, she would be. But she's healed. Amen. That's, that's the idea. And Matthew 8, sorry, 17, uh, that scripture says, Himself He took on our infirmities and He bare our sicknesses. And I've read that, I don't know how many times, uh, you know, since I was a little kid. And maybe it was just because of the way it was told to me, or maybe someone did tell me that it was a promise. For some reason, I've always thought that was a promise to me. And the Bible is full of promises. But that's not a promise. Well, that's not nice, Matt. I know I'm just being honest. It's not a promise. That scripture, though, it's better than a promise. That's a fact. He has done it. When he says that he took our infirmities and bare our sickness, it's been done. Hope believes for the future, and faith believes he has done it and is doing it right now. Amen. So, does this idea change your prayers to God? It's changed mine. Mine down, my, they, they don't sound so much now like asking God now instead of thanking God. There you go. Amen. And the other aspect of faith is in the form of an action. So, what I mean by that is when you read the Bible, do you act like the Scriptures are real? Do you act like they're true? It's one thing to believe them. Uh, just for instance, another one in Matthew 7.7, 7, that Scripture that says, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Ask, seek, and knock are all action. So, don't try to have faith with your own ability. You're going to pull a muscle. <laughs> Just start acting like God's Word is true. Amen. Then it becomes a reality to you. Amen. Now, <laughs> We can talk about this faith and acting on it. Don't get me wrong here. Please don't go start writing checks without any money in the bank. And don't stop taking your medication for your sickness. Let's not be foolish. Just say what God says about our needs. Amen. And make sure your words line up with His. Uh, I'll give you an example. In Joshua 6... Joshua. Uh, the children of Israel, as they were called, 
Joshua's in charge. They're surrounding the city of Jericho. Now, a lot of everybody, you know, most people know the story. But God told them when they got there, Joshua's in charge, and he told them that he had given the city into their hands already. They hadn't even fought anything. There's no battle that had happened yet. But God told them that they had won. But that it wasn't automatically theirs. And they had to act on what God said. And I wouldn't question God's <coughs> battle tactics. But in this case, uh, there weren't any swords or shields or javelins. They uh, were told, and God had specific instructions for them, to march around the city. So now they're marching around the city, and then they are, are to be playing their instruments. That's great. And then uh, every so often shout. Now, for six days, they had to do that one time a day. So there's, there's six times around. And on the seventh day, they had to do it seven times. On the seventh day. So the six minus the four carry the three. That's 13 times. 13 times around the city. And I don't care how big you think the city is or small, but it's not around this building. I know. I felt bad for the tuba player. <laughs> And yeah, they got those little sandals, and they're just leather, and the big bass drum guy, I know. And his back must be killing him, but the flute player guy, he seemed to be okay. But it just, you know, if you read it, the wall stood every time they shouted. And isn't it easier to shout when the walls are down? Yeah. Well, anybody can shout after the walls fall down, after victory. And I was thinking about that, and I was trying to liken it to like a modern-day sport, basketball or football or soccer or something, and maybe seeing one of the teammates out there shouting before the game started, screaming victory and how awesome they did. <laughs> and how awkward that must be for number 22. And they haven't even played the game yet. So you really need to make sure God's there, you know, and that he really told you. To <laughs> but when they acted on their faith, the walls fell down, and that's true victory. Amen. And, you know, I, I want an abundant life for myself and for my family and for you. You're welcome. <laughs> And I, I, I'd like victory to be a part of everything I do in life. It'd be nice. And i got to let you know that we have the abilities and we are equipped to make it happen. You have to know that you're good enough for God. And He sees you better than you see yourself. And that's good news for me. The thing is, is he wants a relationship with you. And he gave us brains. The reason for that is so we can choose him. He didn't make us all the same so we can love him for eternity. He wants a, he wants a person. He wants people to choose to walk with him. Amen. And if we choose Him, nothing can separate us from Him. Amen. Nothing. Amen. Satan has nothing over God. Amen. And before God, he can say nothing. It's not even worth talking about Him. Our relationship with God relies on our time with Him. Amen. He wants you to bring these things to Him. He wants to hear from you. And He desires to fill, fulfill all your needs. At the same time, He wants you to listen so He can talk to you. When two people have a relationship, it is very difficult when one person is doing the talking all the time. Be 
quiet husbands. Uh, we also need each other as church members or as brothers and sisters. Not just to point out our shortcomings or what we did wrong. So I can go for hours on Hosea. <laughs> He's a troubled young man. But the point is, the point is to edify and encourage each other. For, to function together to promote God. And we have every right and reason without excuse to take the gifts that God has given us and believe them, use them, and promote them. Like Pastor Kim has been talking about, we all fall short. We all do. From the pulpit to the pews. We don't have pews here. But we all fall short, and that's where God has given us that our word, repentance. That we can go to Him every day and lift those things up to Him and bring them to Him. When Jesus uh, was up on that cross, when He was bearing the coarseness and roughness of that cross, He covered it with His blood for each one of us. And He did that so we can live our life more abundantly. Um, I like the way God puts things. And there's a scripture I just want to close with real quick. I told you it'd be I told you it'd be fast. But it's Proverbs twenty one thirty. There is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed sorry, <laughs> no plan that can succeed against the Lord. The horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. So be it. And that is all I'm going to give you tonight. Yeah, just to keep you coming back. Yeah, just. Uh, thanks. I don't sing, so we can close in prayer if that's okay. Or we can sing. Yeah. You guys like that tonight?